All right, we're back. You just saw the three-player game of Reckoners. And yes. Yes. I'm so excited. You guys do not understand. We played this thing three, three okay. times before we beat it. Um, so I don't know if it plays better with more people or we right. got or, or we got super lucky at PAX because. I think we might have got a little bit lucky because as soon as we were done with the game, mm -hmm. the guy turns to the table and he goes, you guys only played on the easiest level. <laughs> now, granted, we didn't play easiest. We played We played standard, standard for us three. Standard so. on th three player. So if you think that that looked <laughs> easy to do... <laughs> it was not. It was not. And one of the games... Uh, um, Gary and I played the same characters all the games we played. Jeb switched out for one of the times, and it went worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we learned that. Uh, so I started with the the girl who does her main focus is the investigation, and I switched it to I think it might have been the is it the girl or the guy? I, I don't remember. Did you do? No, the one I, that I think it's the guy. Does uh, containment or something? It, yeah, I think it was the containment guy. Um, and when we played it that way, it just was so bad. So I ended up going back to the girl with the investigation. So if if you uh, if you're one of the people that didn't watch Pax and didn't watch the intro intro and you didn't just catch my excitement, yeah. <laughs> I'll let you roll right now. I really like this game because. I mean, I, I didn't try to hide it too much in the intro because it was like, yeah. we already talked about it once, and I, you're not going to buy a game you don't like, at, right? you don't like <laughs> at, at, when you go to a gaming convention. It wasn't like I didn't get to play it first. Yeah. So, uh, two thumbs up for me. It's one of, like, right now I feel like I would, if people were willing to, I'd bring it to the table a lot. I just really, I don't know, it's just, it's easy and it's fun. Mm-hmm. So. Two thumbs up for me as well. I enjoy playing it, and when we sat down to play it three times in a row, I did not feel bored of it at all. Like, it's always kind of like, are we going to win or not? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's get, it gets kind of, it, like, and, dicey in the middle there when you're like, oh, there's, there's like... There's a pun there. there. There's like seven guys just getting spawned or something like that, and now all the epics come in, and they're all the way... I'm like, there's yeah, so much. It's, um... And if I remember correctly, our very first game of it at PAX kind of came down to the same way yep. that this is. It's I, And I don't know if every game goes like this, but there's almost that, like, you got to throw a Hail, Hail Mary. Yeah, there, there's, there's a you, point where you, you look just, and you're like, like, there might not be a next another turn. turn. So, <laughs> boom, go for it. Yep. Uh, so, uh, anyways, what what does this game have, have going for it? Um, the... Uh, the, the dice mechanic is, is, is pretty nice, the way they did that. Yep, um, it's kind of like Elder Sign and all, what is it, yeah. uh, the, that one dice checking with the, the samurai. Um, you mean the little war, war game? Yeah, yeah, I can't even remember the name Age of it. Age of War. Age of War, that's it. Uh, it's like, it's that kind of a mechanic where you roll and then you Kind of get the matches and stuff. Yeah, so. so it, it is similar to that, um... If you hate dice chuckers, I, I feel like they did a good job with enough different things that you can right. do with the dice. And the fact is that you have multiple people that are also rolling six dice. And you get that, three attempts. <laughs> and, you, and you get three attempts. Yeah. So, And then you have the cards that help manipulate the dice. Mm -hmm. So you are at the mercy of the dice and you're not at the mercy of the dice. So it's it's nice. I like... It's very rare to not be able to use a die for something. I think uh, there's a couple things that you just, any side of a die, you can just spend it to do. Yeah. But, I move, mean... Move and remove a barricade at your free piece. Right. So you can always do those. It, it's like, if there's no, none of the red guys out and you roll the red thing, then maybe, yeah, you can't use that. But you can yeah. still use it to remove barricades and move, yeah. so... And, uh... I like... I, I, the, the, a ton of epics, so those are going to mm -hmm. be different every game. Um, as we stated before, during a component slash setup, however you want to look at it, uh, cities don't make a difference, but they're pretty. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Like the compo all the components are pretty in it. it. As you can see, it's a big box. It does uh, take up 
table it, space. It, it takes up a lot of table space. I guess you could put that as a little bit of a negative. If you're playing, if you want to play a lot of people, if there's only, you, you could probably fit three okay on a standard table. Anything above that, I think you're getting really squishy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not. I don't know. What do you think? I, I just know when we recorded what we did, <laughs> we were able to fit it all in the, the but, screen. So but I that mean, was, that was, we were trying to make it camera friendly right, too. Right. I mean, we could spread out on this table and be pretty. Comfortable. On this table, I think we could do the um, the five or six. But uh, I mean, I guess if you were in an apartment and just had a small kitchen table, yeah, right. it's not going to work. Right. Not for this thing. Um, there, it's it's just a lot. I I like um, the in, you have to be engaged with all the other players in this game. You have to talk to each other. You mm -hmm. have to figure it out. You have to look for. Um, things that other people didn't see, like, hey, what about this guy, or hey, maybe we should contain this, hey, don't forget about these enforcers over here, Let's hey, not go for money hey, turn hey wait a second, Steelheart's going to spawn this many things this time, yeah. hey, wait a second, this guy's going to kill so many people if we let it pop, I, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling after probably the third turn. Yeah, it's good to have that many set of eyes looking at everything because somebody's going to catch somebody something yeah something that they didn't and, uh, and and it helps with a little bit of future planning like hey if somebody can roll this next turn we'll be okay and then at least somebody can you know be on the lookout for it and hopefully you know you have some gear that can help you uh, manipulate what you guys are trying to get um in those next turns or in the future right. or whatever uh, i i love uh, you know uh, Going back to the the epics, I, I like how they all have something different. Like, well, this guy, you don't have a choice but to research him for first. You can't even go, you know. You you got somebody coming out. Hey, you know, three people are rolling hot on just you know instant hitting. Well, too bad, you can't hit him at all unless you research him. So if you don't have a good research turn, guess what? He's just getting stronger. Yep. Um, which is. One of the interesting things about the game is how the longer something stays on the board, the stronger they get, and that goes for Steelheart yeah, too. If you don't, if you don't take the time to contain the epics, he's going to get stronger. Mm -hmm. Or if you focus everything on Steelheart, then the epics, then the epics get stronger. And then there's the epics who actually like, like they have multiple things that power up Steelheart, so it's kind of like. We should get rid of those guys first, or else everything's getting out of control. Yep. Uh, so, I again, there's just it just has a lot of cool elements in my in my opinion, and, and it's not um, it's thinky, but it's not terribly thinky. I, I feel like yeah. it's not like it's not like you get bored or somebody's gonna sit there for half an hour. Like the whole. And I guess that's what I meant by everybody being engaged. You, yeah. It's not, it's not you just thinking, or it's not right. me just thinking. It's more like, hey Jeff, did you get any? Hey Gary, did you get any? You know, well, what are we gonna do? If somebody's sitting there uh, like, it's like brain dead, you could be like, right. well, it, do you see this or yeah, that? Or you can right. kind of help them out. So. Or like, might as well ignore that guy because we're not gonna get anything done with right. him. So you know those types of thing. Or it's like. This whole round sucks. Let's just go for money, and mm -hmm. you hopefully next turn we can make up for it. Uh, anyways, there's just a lot of neat things. That I, I, I love those, the sliding things um, that yep. what we're talking about, the epics and Steelheart getting powered up. I like the trays. Uh, they really do help remember what you've used and what mm. you didn't use. I like the fact you can earn extra extra die. I like the fact that they steal dice from you. Yeah, I, that's... I, I, it's just, um, the miniatures are great. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. on that, the, which board was it? The one with the money and the population? Uh, the, the thing that keeps track of when it's going to steal a die, I like how it's actually goes down levels to, and yeah. then when it actually reaches the bottom then it doesn't i just thought that was a cool touch it because is. yeah they could have just made a normal like track, track. to go boop, yep. boop, boop, and you're like okay whatever but that's actually pretty cool that I like is that. That, and um and again solid components like the like the trackers 
yep. being those big blocky things um, and sliding into a tray, you're not going to knock anything over and lose track of anything in this game. Right. At least, I, don't, I mean, I guess you could... I guess you could tip enforcers over and forget where they go, but that'd still be kind of hard, too. The hardest thing is probably the barricades, because uh, you might not be able to see them if they True. get tipped if over get, or on or the if, side or whatever. You know, if you're looking at them down, yeah. down like that, but that's a, that would be a minor right, thing. Right. Um, and I'm sure somebody at, at a different angle would be like, you can't move there. So, so I, I don't have a whole lot to say. Uh, in terms of that, I kind of hope that they might do some kind of expansion for it. I, I, don't, I was going to say, I, I'd I, like to see an expansion that brings out another like big, big bad guy. guy. Um, I don't... The, wh how, what would you do with him? The His tray thing, or like his containment things, like what he does could be different, I guess. But it, I feel like it's not a huge variety that you can do. Like It's not right. like he has a, a specific ability unless they come out with something that... Like, well, I think I, I think you hit on it. If they do a different one, he they'd either give him some kind of different power, right. or they would totally change up the colors yeah, and stuff like, and how. Maybe and, it's yeah. a guy who doesn't right. put any uh, barricades out, but all the people he kills is like two, three, four, three, two, or something Could be. like that. Like it, you have to manipulate the population more. Right. I, I I don't know um, because it it would be very easy to do that because the epics don't do the stuff that he does for the most part. Right. Uh, he's the one f specifically for, like, the barricades. They don't do the barricades. They just move the black track up for him. Right. So it would be easy to do something like that, at least for some of the uh, abilities. Yeah, yeah. I, they, they probably... And who knows? I don't and know if they're going to know it. And if they they, even if they did only didn't touch Steelheart, you could still come up with a whole new stack of right. uh, regular epics, too. The, um, I think the Kickstarter ex exclusive stuff that you had uh, were some, uh, like, a, a handful of epics. And oh, I think yeah, yeah, one of yeah, them yeah. had special rules with it as well. Oh, okay. But we, we never, like, I didn't read through it to see what exactly he did. Yeah, but we, I do know there is a guy that has some special rules to him. So. Right. We didn't, we didn't throw those in the game when we uh, went over it. So... I, it, I have nothing but good things to say about it. If you hate co-op games, don't pick this up. If you absolutely can't stand dice chucking, don't pick this up. If you don't like the kind of even even a Nail glimpse, <laughs> even a glimpse of like the whole superhero theme, oh, yeah. don't pick this up. Um, it, yeah, I don't. I I won't say that this is an easy game. Uh, I mean, even on easy when we played at the con, it still came down pretty close. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's true in all cases. It's not easy, all cases. easy to win. I don't know that it's not right. Easy, easy to okay. Win. Yeah. Okay. Um, but playing wise, I don't know. Fort. I have a hard time remembering what a fourteen-year-old usually thinks. Uh, like I feel I like I feel like they're pretty little, competent. At 14, I, I mean, so. I feel like you could probably go a little bit lower. There's really. There's nothing to read except yeah, some of no the... Yeah, there's reading. Of, One, once you know what the things do, the, like the symbols are and everything... Yeah, I don't even I think, think there's any reading on the cards, is there? They just... No, but you have to read the book if there's like a, an issue or something. It, but that's well, I know, but I mean, if you were uh, assuming that the child is playing with an adult and then they go, this is what this yeah. does, the kid's going to probably remember that for the rest of his life because yeah. they memorize everything. Where I f forget what I ate yesterday... <laughs> <laughs> but um <clears throat> trying to think of i you know if, if you're if you're uh, again if your t play space is a little confined this might not be for you because I, I, you you can't really i mean it would be tough to play it without the trays too and i don't think you're looking at saving very much room if any I mean, if you see, like, with the cities, they kind of have it where you put it in a circle to know the rotation and everything. But, I mean, you could line them up, but then you just kind of have to remember the the rotation order. I think the only thing you could play the game without would be the player trays, honestly. You'd have to remember some of the stuff. Yeah. But... I, would, I think for the player trays, uh, the, the coin things that you get, the research... 
because uh, right now it is it's where you put it out of your tray when you get it, but then after that turn you put it onto your tray. Yep. I think for that you would just put it to your left, and then once you get it, put it to your right. That's probably the easiest way to remember that yep. without a tray. So I agree. Um, so so anyways, I don't. I mean, maybe you guys, you know, if you're watching this, maybe you you know of some other people that, you know, uh, category that that wouldn't like it. I mean, I honestly feel like the biggest pool that wouldn't like this would be a I don't like co-op and there are plenty of those people they would much rather be I want to win the game right. myself right. Um, <laughs> like my son <laughs> it's true it's true <laughs> yeah. you know so um, but I'll tell you this is a this is a good one for if you want a team victory it is like mm -hmm. you, you gotta you, earn it <laughs> yeah um, so anyways, things to remember, um, the, uh, when you're placing the red guys, uh, there's actually a limit on how many you can place at each location. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, barricades, I think are also placed one at a time in a circle. Yep. Not all, they don't lump up all right. at once. Um, there are some cards that are kind of like, you might not know just by looking at them, so you need to look at the book uh, to figure it out. I know we did have questions about... Uh, and actually, now that Jeb brought that up, that was just one of the points that I, I wanted to make. Of all the good things that I said, it, the one thing that really was... I, I, I mean, it was actually bad. There are cards in there that need some clarification mm -hmm. that they kind of lump into a general category in the back of the book. And some of them, in our opinion, needed a little bit more clarification than the lumped category they got put into. I would have rather have seen, um, you know, I, I don't know, obviously they felt like they covered enough. I think we made mostly the correct mm -hmm. decisions with what we did. We looked up a couple things. Also, it would have been nice to have a, a little bit more extensive glossary on the individual cards because right. the individual cards are all symbol-based. So mm -hmm. once you have a general idea of what a symbol does, great. But if they add a little twist to it, then you're like, eh. You know, like one of them, uh, for example, and I can't remember the card off the top of my head, but uh, some of the cards have a picture of a white die and then what it does. Well, one card, it was literally any die. Right. And then another card, it only literally said white. only basic die. Right. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. It was different? So it was little things like that. And if I got that wrong, then we read it in the rules wrong because Jeb's backing me up on it. He remembers mm -hmm. reading it too. Because I, I question, well, wait, that does that. And then I have one over here, and I read it to Gary and Jeb, and they went, nope, that says basic die only. Right. So guess what? I wasn't able to do what I was hoping I was able to do. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But again, some of the cards right out of the box could have used a, a little bit. It won't ruin the game for you. You'll just be right. a little frustrated with, I don't know exactly what that means. Make up what you think it means and go on with it until you... Um, find something and, else. Until you, yeah, until you find or the find exact it, yeah. act rule or somebody pipes up and says that's not how it's supposed to be played or whatever. Which people might do to on our video. <laughs> they might. But again, it, even if we... I swear, though, if you tell us we didn't win that game, I, I'll, I'm going to come through the camera. That's odd, because I will... Yeah, he, we he won the he'll game. He'll just take it out on me. <laughs> yeah, it was probably his fault if we did it wrong. Uh, so, anyways, that that actually was... Uh, other than that, uh, the, I thought the rule book was, was, uh, was very good. Just the glossary on the cards, in my opinion, could have been, could have been better. Um, other things to remember, the tray, the tray slots aren't, that's not a limit to the dice you can put. Oh, right, right. right you know, so, right. like... Because there are cards that will allow you to have another die, so... Well, that and the fact is that, like, if you had a god roll, your first roll, you can just be done. Oh, you're talking about how yeah, many you can save Yeah, how many you can each, stack in each okay. thing. I was talking about the, the oh, sixth no, placement yeah, things, that, but, yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that question's 
come up much, but it it could. Um, One thing they uh, say in the book that I think somewhere they like put in all caps was don't forget that his movement is at the very end of his turn, Steelheart. Because I, when I saw that, I was like, I guess that's one thing people were forgetting was you activate him, and then you just kind of start the next round. You're supposed to activate him and then move him, roll his movement die, and then go to the next round. Right. Because so. where he is affects where he plays his thing. Where he yep. is affects what you can do to him. Uh, there's a lot that affected him. Um, as you saw in our game, unfortunately, with only three people, uh, he can hit... He. Theoretically, he could stay in this bot the whole entire game. Right. Whereas with one more person, or one less, per yeah, one less person, that won't happen as much, right? One less person. I didn't think it, about it? it. So there'd be three if you rolled a, th yeah. So once you get to four people, yeah. he doesn't end up ever being on the same spot twice. I uh, that's a. A little bit of an aside on on that. Uh, I guess. Oh, uh, the epics. I know you got confused at one point uh, when we were. You were like, "Yeah, we're gonna get him this time," and then you were looking at the wrong side of the epic card, and the the research uh, was one less than uh, what what you thought it was. So yes. Yeah, he wants to point out something I did wrong. I see. <laughs> Just keep in mind left. Okay, so if you have no idea what he's talking about, I messed up the how you kill him with what the rewards were. Don't worry, guys. He's going to be dead this turn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I'll tell one thing that I did. I screwed up. It was I, probably really much bigger than mine. Yeah, it was. Um... <laughs> I, for some reason, I thought that you could not investigate Steelheart at all. I thought it was always the rewards from the epic were the only thing that could investigate him. And that's not true. And that is not true. So when I played that entire game, I did not even yeah, consider sure. doing okay. it. Yeah, well. However, since that game was kind of close, I don't know if I would have changed. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know, honestly, until a certain point in the game, you really... Yeah, it, Doing direct damage to him because you're in his spot is almost like a bonus. Right. Like I got, I have nothing to do with this thing that I ha this die that I have left. I can't move. There's no barricades to get rid of, or it's mm -hmm. useless to get rid of it. I'm like, okay, I'll hit him once, or whatever. I mean, I feel like that's right. That, I mean, and I almost. And we in the game that we won too. We're really we are really fortunate. We were that we were able to heal people that game too, right? In we had the healing one. card. No, the one we won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the healing. The healing card is so key in this game. <laughs> you would think that healing. Oh, I get to heal too. So what? <laughs> so yeah, what? Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. But uh, anyways, um, I, I for things to remember, I will go back to. Jeb's statement that I reiterate every game because I don't do it and he is great doing it is open your cheat sheet or open the rule book or wherever it is that gives you the steps and just go through them and you know glance at them every single time even once you've memorized it you get sucked up in a game and it's easy to forget a step He's really good about not doing that. So I, I get, I'm always like, okay, ready to go. Jeb's like, you didn't do that step yet. I'm like, darn it. So the worst thing I think is, uh, is when a question comes up and all of us go to research it, and then when we come back and we're like, where were we? <laughs> yeah. And that just kind of throws me off so much because I'm like, I should have, I should have remembered where we were, but. But anyways, I, I feel like that is in this in this game. If you do that, yeah. you won't even have to remember the stuff that we said. Remember honestly, it's right. it's it's really clear on. Yeah, their little you, card that they give you is yeah. really nice. I mean, it, that it tells you what to do in each phase. Um, and if it's not one hundred percent clear what what you do in that step, the rule book 
has a little bit more. So you can't you can't go wrong with that. So I I don't have anything else. I feel like I've hyped the crap out of this game. I I really liked it. I know that I've seen a few comments where other people weren't, but that's like every game. Some people aren't gonna like it. Um, well, this wasn't even like I had no clue about this. And then well, neither when, did I. When we sat down and played it, I we was were like, gonna walk Holy by crap. the guy. That was another thing. This guy was was good about getting people to sit too, because we kind of looked at the game and we're like, "That well, looks kind of neat," but we were ready to keep walking. And he was like, yeah. "Come on, have a seat." Yeah. Um, him and then the the girl for the other Scor Scorpius was uh, okay. they they were very good uh, teachers and or, hey, come, you need to come check this out. Uh, yep. So, anyways, uh, I got nothing. I in, if somebody wants to come over, I'll play this game with them. I'll be here. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you got anything else? Nope. I think that's about it. All right. Till next time. See you. Boards and booze. Booze and boards. With Mickey and Jeb.